What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video and uh, it should be a good one and I kind of wanted to precursor this one inside. I've already filmed the video. I'm actually starting to edit the video now. But this is all about finding new walleye lakes, right? How do you do it? And if you're lucky enough to live in the great state of Wisconsin, Minnesota, or Northern Michigan, they're just loaded with smaller lakes. Um, most of them probably suck, but some of them definitely have some good potential, right? So how do you weed through all that stuff to find a lot of these lakes? And a lot of these lakes you don't hear anything about just because there's so many. They're way back in the middle of nowhere. This lake, I drove a long ways to get to it. And uh, But how, how do you kind of start this process, right? Because if you just go without any information, it's probably going to be a failure, right? And I'm not talking about like getting a fishing report for a lake. These don't exist on a lot of these smaller, you know, a couple hundred to a thousand acre lakes a lot of times. I'm talking about finding something called spring surveys. That's the number one thing I look for this is where the DNR goes out. Normally they, they net a bunch of fish or they electroshock fish, they clip fins and they do it several days after that. And then they take um, the amount of recaptures they have and through some kind of formula they have, which is hopefully somewhat accurate, they develop a density for that lake based on you know the size and how many fish were captured and recaptured, right? Um, of adult walleyes. And a lot of times we'll call adult walleyes fish that are like 13 or 14 inches and up or something like that. So a lot of times these smaller lakes end up being action walleye lakes, which is good because it's February and uh, we just want to catch some fish, right? So like I said, spring surveys and a lot of times these will be laid out by county. You might see several that are from like in that county from 2019, which is good because they're recent. There might be several from 18, you know, five and 17, and, you know, obviously it always helps the more recent that information is, you know, it lets you know those fish are still probably in there and that size structure is probably still relevant. So. A lot of times, like I said, you can look this up by county. So what I've done on my computer, I'm not gonna show you guys the exact lake we're on, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. You type in spring surveys by county. So let's say we're gonna go to a county, and here we have a whole bunch of spring surveys in front of us. So I'm gonna click on the lake I wanna go to. This one is from 2014, which is not super new, so it's kind of a gamble, right? The next thing we're gonna do is there's a couple of different numbers in which we're looking for, right? Number one, uh, we're looking at this graph right here. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. And this is what you're going to see in a lot of these lakes that have a high abundance of fish, right? And this is a lot of times what I'm looking for in a lot of these numbers lakes, right? You can see the graph kind of goes from like 11 inches to like basically 18 inches with a lot of fish at like 14, 15, and 16 inches long, which is kind of what we're looking for, right? That's our action numbers lake. We, you know, it, we all... We always want the lake where there's more and bigger fish all the time, right? But most time, especially in our smaller systems, those lakes just don't exist. So a lot of times we're looking at high densities and this is exactly what a high density chart would show. Now, if you showed a lake that would have, let's say, you know, a fair number of fish, but a good high end, what you'd be seeing is this much more spread out with much lower numbers and it would be much more spread out over this graph. And the peak of it would probably be closer to like 18, 19, and 20 inches long with fewer fish on the small end and fewer fish up here at 26, 27, 28. Um, it'd be the peak would be spread out and it'd be farther towards the bigger end of the spectrum, obviously. But for this purpose of this video, this is the kind of lake that we're looking for. So you look at this graph, right? You wanna see a lot of those fish at 15, 16, 17 inches, right? And the next thing you, you do is you look for, the other big number is fish per acre or adult fish per acre. And the way they calculate this, like we said, is through some random formula, which is hopefully somewhat accurate. And this lake is insane. Don't expect you're going to see numbers. This one is 8.5 adult fish an acre in a, let me get this right for you, in a, let me see how many, 362 acre lake. So in this lake, there is approximately, they estimate, 3,082 adult walleyes in a lake that's 362 acres. Now that is insane. That is not the normal, right? A lot of times a high density lake will be like 3.5 to even five is insane, right? Most of the lakes that I fish on this video, the average is estimated at 1.2 to 1.5 adult fish per acre. Obviously those lakes are much more geared towards catching slightly larger fish, um, but 8.5 fish an acre is absolutely insane. So a lot of times if you're going to a new body of water, do your research like this. You're not going to find a fishing report in this lake. You're not going to find any information on this lake. There's not even people I don't think that live on this lake. But looking at these numbers and at least having an idea before you go there is just to say, okay, there is a lot of fish in this lake and they're probably mostly this size. Um, definitely gives you a step up on weeding out a lot of those lakes. So with that being said, this is kind of the research that I do when I go to New Body Water to fish walleyes and uh, enjoy the video. It should be a fun one. All right, it is time to punch some holes. And uh, 
minimal mapping on this lake, which means we're probably gonna have to drill a lot of holes. So there's kind of like 10 foot contours, but it doesn't really accurately portray this spot very well. At least that's what I'm assuming. Most lakes that have 10 foot contours on their map, not very accurate, especially a lot of these backwoods, no houses on it type of lakes. So we have to drill a lot of holes. And what I'm gonna kind of do is just grid stuff. And then we'll kind of go through and check with the flasher to kind of visually map that spot out as we go. So we'll uh, get the pistol bit ripping, and see what we see. All right, well, we've kind of found the top of this thing. We started out, we had to drill a few more holes than normal because um, the map was off, like we probably said. But uh, we finally kind of found like 17 to nine feet of water, which lets us know that's kind of probably where the top of this thing's gonna be. And uh, we're just gonna kind of start out, you know, working those, the edges of this one big piece of structure out here. And, uh, We'll see what happens. I'm just gonna move through these holes real quick. I mean, cause I just want a visual check of kind of what's here. I also threw a few beaver dams out um, to see if we can, you know, pick up some stragglers or just kind of see what's around us a little bit easier. You know, a lot of times in the middle of winter like this, what you might see is um, fish, you know, more likely to hit just that live bait setup. So that's what we got going on. And uh, I'm gonna kind of run through a bunch of these holes real fast. I'm gonna be jigging with the, uh, um, Acme Cast Master in the eighth ounce, kind of a pink color, one of my favorites. And uh, we'll see what happens. Just getting set up out here. Figured we'd throw out a few tip ups. There's definitely a fish on here. Right there. Got him hooked up right away. Good sign, and it's feeling walleye ish. Right here at the hole, we got leader. I'm kind of play himself. There we go. First walleye of the day. Not a super big one. He's kind of a funky looking one. Real chunky, healthy fish. And uh, that is what we are after today. Hopefully, we get a few bigger ones. But uh, it's a good sign, anyways. Let's know we're at least in a decent area, or probably close to one here. We'll get them popped off. And get our minnow back, too. Just a little shiner on there. And there we go. First one of the day. Sun's kind of just about to come up here. A lot of times on a new body of water, anytime you can maximize your lines and get something like a tip up going or a dead stick, it definitely pays off to help you not only find those fish, but in a lot of lakes, especially in this midwinter period, a lot of times these fish prefer this. So you might jig through these holes, not mark much of anything, throw out a tip up or a dead stick and get a whole bunch of action. So we'll see if it continues. All right, we got a flag up here. Oh, there she goes a little bit. Easier out of the hole. Got a fish on here. Feels like probably a walleye. Ooh, might not be too shabby either. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. No, nope. a little snot rocket. The other thing which is in many of these lakes. Well, the sun's now coming up. We got a little pike and uh, a little walleye so far, but we'll see what we can do the rest of the time. All right, another flag up here. Everything's been on a tip up so far. Not a whole lot of response from these fish jigging. Not feeling much yet. Oh, he's right here. Got him hooked up. Fish on. Feels more thump thump walleye head shakes. It's right here. Oh yeah. There we go. Not a big one. Probably about a 15 incher right there. But on the tip up. And uh, it appears it's gonna be a live bait thing. Just not getting a response out of these fish. On a jigging, in fact, we're not even marking them. Just pretty much checking out these things. But the good sign is, as you can see now, the sun is definitely up. And uh, there's one right there. And the legal limit is 15 inches out here. So I might keep a couple of these little guys if they are legal fish, because they are tasty at that size. Just gonna feed them a little bit of slack. Got them. 
and yet another little pike hooked up right there Well, it is now about the middle of the day. The sun is up and it's a bright one and it's just constantly getting colder and more windy as the day goes on. So I figured I'd get out of the wind, do a little recap real quick. And uh, basically, no, we've all caught two walleye so far, which is not a huge, great success story. But you're on this lake for the first time, basically no information, and we caught a couple of fish based on a decision, right? And uh, basically what we did was we came out here, tried to set up on the biggest spot possible, which the map kind of vaguely outlined. It took a lot of holes to kind of find the spot, find the high spot, and then get set up on them. And uh, basically what I realized is that the fish that I marked on the graph and uh, the fish, we, the walleyes we caught and the pike we caught are all coming in holes that have some kind of weeds in them. And they're probably cabbage. And a lot of these deep, clear, natural little lakes like this, if you have a deep weed line in like 13 to 20 feet of water, great spot to start no matter if you're fishing for perch or crappies or bluegills or pike or walleyes right and kind of what I, you know we've only caught a couple of fish so far and some pike but my guess is, is that towards the evening hours because this lake's so clear we're going to see fish crawl up on top of this now if i had half a day to run around here with side imaging i guarantee i could find some of these deeper little lips that come off of this big spot right it's a long skinny bar and if there's a little finger that came off with a little 29 foot high spot on there with some hard bottom that's probably the spots where the fish would be but those spots aren't mapped and honestly it would take probably thousands of holes to find that so i'm just fishing off of basically the information that i have and what i'm about to do is kind of go refine this spread and make sure those all those things are around these weed clusters these tip-ups and uh, really hope it pays off in the late afternoon and into evening you know a lot of these lakes these deep clear lakes especially if you're set up on like a shallow water focal point um, like the top of a bar or something like that it's a lot of times you're banking on that evening bite window right at dark so i'm really hoping that's kind of kind of be the deal i think it, you know it's a good sign that the, the fish were there this morning in a little bit of light anyways and uh, my guess is a lot of times the evening is going to be an evening an even stronger window in the evening got mixed up there in the words but that's the plan um, still fish very reluctant to bite any kind of jigging presentation so maybe in the evening we'll see that happen who knows but I think for sure we'll get a few more opportunities on tip-ups and the goal whenever you come to New Lake is obviously to catch fish and have success and I think we're on the right course this is how a lot of things start it's not a lot of times like you get to the lake you go boom 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 oh my gosh we're catching so many fish there's always this progression of you know we're not on fish we're close, we're catching a few fish, and then okay, we finally finalized it, we're catching lots. So I'm hoping by kind of setting this stuff up right in the sweet spot, um, that, that evening push is gonna come in and we're gonna catch a few more fish. But stay tuned, I got some work to do, we'll find out. So basically all I'm using today is a lot of these smaller shiners and suckers, and real clear, and a lot of times you gotta cater your leader size to, uh, the water clarity you're fishing so i'm actually going all the way down to a little bit longer leader and what i'm also doing is going all the way down to six and eight pound fluoro and uh, the only reason it's six or eight is because the spool no longer has a label but i know it's one of those two and uh, a lot of times especially during the midday hours where these fish can be real finicky uh, running a real thin diameter a real invisible line is absolutely key in a lot of these real clear systems. So we'll get the beaver dam set back up and uh, hopefully catch a fish. All right guys, got a flag up here. Hoping we are done with the pike. Flurry and we're back into walleyes here, we'll see. Give them a little bit of line. Got them right there, hooked up. I don't know. I don't know if it's pike or walleye. Definitely took some line out though, which is normally a sign it's probably more than likely gonna be a pike. But we will see here. Lots of line out. Wow. Ton of line. Where is the leader? Oh, now he's starting to fight a little bit. Oh, look at that. Nice little chunker walleye right there. 
That is what I'm talking about. I would have swore that was gonna be a pike, but it's a nice stocky price, 16 inch walleye. Slowly but surely just kind of running these set lines out here on this uh, little finger off this bar is paying off. We're gonna get him on hook quick. He's kind of hooked deep. He's gonna be a keeper fish though anyways. All right, well, it's finally getting to be that time of day. See where the sun's at. And look at this, we got a live one. I am hoping the pike bite is over here. Literally just set this tip up, kind of, there he is right there. Been moving him around a little bit. This is feeling more not big, which leads me to believe it's probably not a pike. Where you at, buddy? Oh yeah, right there. <laughs> not a big one, probably about a 15 and a quarter right there. On a single hook, I'm gonna get him on hook hook because he's hooked kind of deep. There we go, let's get him popped off. Success. And we kind of waited till this prime time window. Let me get the water off the screen there. And uh, not big ones, but kind of knew that coming in, but there we go, another walleye. We're hoping this is kind of the start of a halfway decent wave going on here. Let's let him go. Go find your home, buddy. Today has been all about the set lines and beaver dams. Man, he's in 14 feet of water. Why are you struggling to go down, buddy? Get out of here. There he goes, kicking off good. But today has been all about the beaver dams and running these set lines. And uh, one thing I always say is just, if you're not getting bit, keep moving them around. You know, you might not have to move it 100 yards, but you know, making small movements in the area where fish are is a lot of times the key, especially when you're fishing weeds. Fish will have a very routine way in which they'll set up in weeds. And uh, never being at this lake before, you don't know what that is. But moving those around, a lot of times you can kind of find these travel corridors and these spots where fish are a little bit more likely to hold. So we're gonna get her set back up. Gotta go grab a minnow and hopefully this is the start of the run here. All right, we got a flag up here. Ooh, it's just spinning just a little bit. Just gonna get rid of some of that ice. Just taking a little bit of line here. Got him right there. Definitely feeling walleye right here. Doesn't feel too bad. Oh yeah, there's another one. <laughs> Not a big one, another one about that same size, you know, 14 and a half, 15 inches. It's actually the same hole I caught that last one out of. So whatever reason, they're definitely coming through this little zone right here. He's only about 15 inches long, probably. Running that single hook, got him right in the corner of the mouth right there. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. The sun is going down. Not getting that big evening flurry yet, but it is what it is. Catching a few fish. Can't complain too much. We'll get him popped off here. He's hooked pretty good. Just right in the outside corner here. There we go. Another. Northwoods walleye. gonna do it for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed this one I know it was kind of crude basically I just wore the chesty all day and uh, ran around chasing flags and catching some fish on tip ups what was not in the video is uh, about the six million 20 inch northerns I caught infested with little pike apparently at least the spot I was in was but um, did we get absolutely crushed fish today absolutely not but there's basically no map of this lake really had no idea what to expect so it's kind of make it up as you go and if you go to a new lake that you've never been to and you catch five or six walleyes and you catch your limit of the keeper fish, how can you not uh, be satisfied with that? And that was kind of the goal and uh, we did it. But uh, you know, a lot of these lakes are very difficult to fish in the winter, especially if they don't have mapping and you haven't been there in the boat. So don't be discouraged. What I would recommend doing is getting in a boat, kidding like all of these lakes, spending a couple days just at least driving around so you have an idea of what they look like and how fish set up in different spots and your success is probably gonna be much higher, but 
I'm definitely wanting to film one of these new Lake Walleye ones. It was cool to do, and uh, hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed the learning process as I was learning the process, I guess. So um, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Got some fun stuff planned for the next couple days, some different species which we have not targeted at all on the ice. And I was doing some of this last week. This video just did not come together, but uh, I got a feeling we're gonna hit the right bite on the right pot of fish on this trip. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more content, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.